All right, here's the angle grinder. Here's how I have it set up. I have it uh, mounted to the workbench. You see, I made a little mounting bracket. It bolts down here to the workbench. And then I have a rubber mat that deflects sparks down to the ground. I also have a backboard that deflects sparks from going back in there, in that area over there. Angle grinder gets plugged into this power strip here, and when the power strip's turned on, angle grinder's turned on. That way I can turn on and off the angle grinder with uh, the big thick gloves that I have, the welding gloves that I have. So, um, this is how I prefer to cut my metal out. Alright, here's the rough, rough shaped um, piece of, of metal. We started with something similar to this, took the angle grinder, and uh, with a cutoff wheel, cut off this. Now we're going to go back with, over it with a grinding wheel and get it closer to the pattern. Alright, so here's the two wheels that I'm using. Here's my cutoff wheel that I'm using. You see how thin that is? And here's the grinding wheel. You see how thick that is. This is the two wheels that I'm using. Real quickly, guys, you got to be safe. Uh, safety, safety equipment is is key to doing this this type of work. Uh, I got my respirator, air mask, uh, air, air protection, face mask is a must when I'm doing my grinding, and then of course, big thick welding gloves. These gloves are awesome, and I prefer um, the the gun type muzzlers. Uh, roll over ear plugs that actually go in your ear. It's so dirty out here. My hands are always dirty that uh, it would just get my ears all dirtied up. And uh, so this is a little bit of protection that I, I use. So safety first. But anyway, this is um, the final, after grinding uh, the edge with the uh, angle grinder. Now you see how I have a big burr on this side here. And I have to get rid of that burr. And so my next step is to take it over to the uh, belt sander, the 4x36 belt sander, and do some flat sanding on it. So I'll show you how to do that here next. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off this burr on this back side that has been created from the grinding wheel, grinding the metal off. So the way to do that is set this on the flat part of the, the uh, belt sander and sand that off. The only problem is having to hold that on there. So I've made a tool that helps assisting in that and it looks like this. You have to 2 by 4 This is the important part of it. There's two extremely, extremely strong, um, extremely strong magnets inside here. These are an inch and a half long. These are three quarters of an inch uh, in diameter. So what I do is I put in the, the blade on the magnets and that allows me to hold the blade on the belt sander without my fingers getting in the way or without the risk of it flying off and uh, causing some harm. So, 
it's all sanded smooth now. Now I don't need to get all fancy with it. I still have more grinding to do on this blade. So and that'll be our next step. But I want to get rid of that burr. So all right. So next step after it's been flat sanded, take it over to the one by thirty. Oops. Take it over to the one by thirty and get closer to the pattern. Get it real close. Alright, so here's our three processes we've gone through so far. I uh, just got this one off the belt sander and gone over all the edges. Uh, and I used, used 80 grit on both uh, belt sanders that, you sh that you've seen so far on the 1x30 and the 4x36. And those are two belt sanders that I have in my shop and that's what I use on all my knives. And the next step is to mark my holes with a center punch. I have a spring assisted center punch and then your typical hammer at center punch. So punch. I have a little railroad spike, railroad tie I mean. And I use that to kind of cushion the blow to get a better punch out of it. So now all my holes are marked. Basically, this is what it's going to look like after it's been uh, edge has been grinded on, and this is ready for heat treat. Let's see, I have four holes in here, and this is going to get a G10 handle. This one is going to get a paracord wrap, and so I'm going to put one more hole in this lineup to give itself a good wrap. Not only my handle material, the handle goes right about here. And one more hole if you put a handle on, it's just too close to the end of the handle. Since I'm going to put a par paracord wrap on here, I want to have one more hole on there. So now all my holes are marked. Now the next step is to drill the holes. Alright, so I got my piece in the vise. This is what I'm going to use for drilling. Here's the drills bits I'm going to use. I'm going to start off with an eighth inch drill bit, move up to a quarter inch drill bit, a three eighths, and then finally a half inch drill bit. Alright, here it is. Got both sides grinded flat and smooth down to 120. Uh, edges the same thing. Got our holes in the, the handle for the paracord wrap. And uh, what's next to do is to get it ready to grind the bubbles on here. So, first thing that I do. I get my red pen and mark up the edge. Paint the edge, whatever you want to call it. Because I'm going to be scribing some lines in here. And once I scribe the lines in there, it allows me to see those lines a lot easier with the, the red paint on there, red marker. Alright, so I got my dial calipers and uh, I need to determine the center of the blade. Now it's eighth inch stock so it should be 120. It's about 121, 122. It's close enough. So to find the center, fix my dial calipers to 60 thousandths, 60 thousandths of an inch, then I'll scribe a line. And that's the center of my blade. Now I want to leave sixty thousandths of an inch uh, prior to heat treating so that the blade would not warp or anything. So I need to scribe a line on this side and a line on this side that will stop me when grinding so I will leave sixty thousandths of an inch in there. So by simple math that is going to be thirty thousandths of an inch. So I'll set my dollar calibers at thirty thousandths of an inch. Scribe one side.
subscribe to the other side. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this or not, but now I have now I have three lines scribed onto my blade. I have a center mark, I have an outer, and an outer. And now when I'm grinding, I'll grind to that outer edge, or grind to that outer edge, and that'll leave me my 60 thousandths inside between. The other thing I want to do is I want to come in from this point in an eighth inch. So I use my black marker and a tape measure. I'll mark eighth inch. And that is going to mark the location of my ricasso. As you can see on this blade, it's already done. Eighth inch from here to there. And then my grind will start. I do not want my grind to come all the way to the end of this edge here. That way you will be able to cut yourself when holding the knife. If you have a little area where you're, there's space, uh, less tendency for your bullet, your knife to come, your hand to come down and get cut. So I want to make sure I mark that and have all my markings done before I go to the grinder. Grinding. So I'm going to be using my grinding jig. This is a grinding jig I've made. If you haven't seen the making of this grinding jig, uh, go to my previous videos and you'll see uh, the making of the grinding jig itself. So I have a pin here, a pin here, and that holds the blade onto the grinding jig itself. Then I have a uh, hole here, hole here, and hole here. And that is for this bolt. And that will bolt the that will bolt the iron clad to the grinding jig. Now I want to line this this iron clad up. So I have some play, play here. I want to line it up so that the top of this grinding jig and the top of this blade are f both flat. That will give me a 90 degree ricasso when I'm grinding. And that's what I'm looking for. So I just want to line those up so they're both flat. Get my wrench and tighten this down. Double check and make sure that I'm sitting on my pins, my locating pins, which I am. And that's good. So now I'll go by the 1 by 30 and we'll grind an edge on this. You can see the angle of the grinder jig and see how that is straight and that's where it sits. Using these thumb screws I can adjust this edge of the grinding jig up or down to change the angle that I want to the desired angle for the blade. There's a preset determined uh, blade angle based on uh, figures and a lot of experimentation to get to where it's at. And then I have these locking nuts that lock in the thumb screw so they can't invertly move. And these invertly become a handle when I'm using the, the grinding jig uh, by moving it back and forth. So you're going to see me move the blade up to the belt sander and just slide it across. Just slide it across, trying to keep a flowing movement. And once I get one side done, then I'll uh, unbolt it, flip it over to the other side, and then we're ready for heat treat. Alright, let's talk a little minute, a minute about grinding jigs. 
biggest benefit with this jig is that the blade bolts onto the jig and when it needs to be dunked in the water you take the whole jig and all and you dunk it in the water pull it back out and you're good to go it's made out of metal um, I used to have one out of wood and every time I would bring the blade back to the wood it would, would get soft and it would just wasn't good so the main benefit is consistency of this this uh, grinding jig and that was a huge design um, motivation for this grinding jig also to be able to adjust the angle I did not want a fixed angle grinding jig <coughs> this is going to be a scanty grind the grind will come probably about up to here or so it's going to be about three quarters of an inch up give or take um, if I want to do a full flat grind or if I want to bring a, a high grind on this this, this uh, knife all I have to do is change my angle here to accommodate for that and that's not a problem um, as it stands right now it is ready for heat treat I'm going to re remove my uh, the, the red marker I put on here a little bit of solvent I am going to uh, oil this up with a little bit of oil and then uh, hang it up and get ready for other ones that I have for heat. There's a rat with that. I hope you've enjoyed the the tutorial, the explanation of the ironclad. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. <coughs> hey, I just want to add a little bit more to this video and uh, a little more explanation about the ironclad. And if you guys don't know yet, I have a degree in computer-aided drafting and design, and uh, and this that's why I do all my designs on CAD. On, uh, on computer first and get that all figured out before it comes onto metal. Um, same thing with the grinder jig. The grinding jig was all done on CAD based on the design of the knife, the finished knife. This curvature here allowed the, where the pins were located and then the locating of the, the bolt in hole and, uh, and keeping the top of this flat with the top of the, the grinding jig. All that was engineered and designed on CAD before it became a working part um, but I wanted to show you the origins this is the original ironclad this was uh, at the time called the experiment because that's basically what it was it was an experiment um, this is a piece of mild steel by the way this is not a piece of carbon steel <coughs> excuse me and this is one of the prototypes that I was using to experiment with hold on need a drink <clears throat> much better I made quite a few of these prototypes a um, few of them I've scrapped a few of them I've turned them into other things but um, started out as that ended up as that so as you can see I've made quite a few changes this was <clears throat> started out in April of, uh, of last year and um, started designing and started looking into different um, different features of knives and that sort of stuff and uh, I knew I wanted a, a belly and I wanted a, a, a point at the end you know good for skinning good for for drilling digging that sort of thing and I wanted some sort of a choil on it and um, I'm talking with Kylie Harris of CKC uh, knives and ended up kind of looking a lot like his um, hiker a little bit and uh, it's not what I wanted to go with uh, it, it may be a little bit, a little bit bigger you know I'm but it's not what I wanted to go with as far as a knife design and so I changed the, the design quite a bit and kept changing it and kept changing it kept changing it uh, kept making prototypes and feeling them in, in my hand and see how they felt and see how they worked and that sort of thing and eventually I came down to what you have here which is the ironclad uh, I started producing these in uh, September of last year and uh, been, been doing pretty well but it took me quite a bit to get from this stage to this stage here and I'm pretty happy with the results uh, I think the ironclad is a great great little neck knife and uh, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the performance of it um, and when I once I get these next knives back from from heat treat I'm going to be doing a performance test I've done them in the past but did not record them it was just from my own personal knowledge of how the blade geometry worked and how the the, the blade weight worked and and all that sort of stuff um, before I went ahead and, and made these public videos and, and that sort of stuff. So um, look forward to doing a product test, uh, blade review, 
and um, so I just want to give you a little bit of background on the on ironclad. Um, thanks for you guys' uh, your your emails, uh, your your comments that you made. I know some of you have sent me quite a few of, of emails and comments, and I really appreciate that. I have no problem trying to answer those. You know, I mean, I don't know everything, but what I do know, I'll try to share it with you. So, if you have any any other comments, any questions, uh, feel free to ask. All these blades here are going to be up for sale, posted on my website, as well as posted on Facebook and a few other uh, knife forums that I belong to. So, um, visit my website cgsknives.com uh, look me up on Facebook uh, CGS Knives and um, uh, just continue to watch over for the, the next finishing video of that that knife so thanks a lot guys I appreciate it